A New York summer staple is back. What you can expect for the Macy's 4th of July fireworks spectacular. Getting a nice break from the heat. In fact, temperatures dropping to the coolest they've been in a week. What to expect by morning. New York Live with the Brooklyn Gym that's climbing to new heights indoors and outdoors. This is News for Now for June 10th. I'm Gilma Avalos. Summer in New York City is back in a major way. Macy's iconic 4th of July fireworks are coming back. This morning, Mayor de Blasio made the announcement that the Macy's Independence Day fireworks show will return in full force. You may remember last year, COVID turned the celebration into a week of surprise shows to avoid crowds. But Macy says expect something big, honoring the U.S. after a lost summer last year. On Sunday, July 4th, approximately 9.25 p.m., the 45th annual Macy's 4th of July fireworks will ignite in a jaw-dropping salute to our nation. From five barges lining the East River in midtown Manhattan, Macy's will launch more than 65,000 shells and effects, delighting spectators in Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, lining the waterfronts, and millions more on television nationwide during our NBC broadcast special. This is the 45th year of the show, and there will be musical performances by Coldplay, Reba McIntyre, Black Pumas, One Republic, and Tori Kelly. And again, you can catch it right here on NBC4 New York. New York is known for its fireworks displays, along with its nightlife, too. Now there could be plans to create a museum to chronicle that nightlife. The city's Office of Nightlife issued its first report on nightlife, and it's recommending the establishment of a museum or archive to chronicle the city's late night legacy. It's unclear where funding would come from. The report also issued recommendations for getting nightclubs help post pandemic. On Staten Island, pepper spray sent 14 people to the hospital, four of them police officers. This happened during a dispute inside an apartment building on Osgood Avenue in Clifton. Police say the people involved knew each other. So far, there have been no arrests. None of the injuries are serious. Most of them were related to eye and skin irritations. A nightmare at the beach. Instead of lying out on the sand, a woman suddenly found herself being swallowed by it. This happened Tuesday in Ventnor, New Jersey. And here's a photo showing this woman trapped waist deep in the sandy sinkhole. Thankfully, a good Samaritan waded through that sand to help her out. She was not hurt. The sand was apparently loosened by some construction to extend a stormwater drainage pipe. For whatever reason, at the end of the day, the workers failed to uh redesignate the area as unsafe and oversight, which will not happen again. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is managing this project. A spokesman calls the incident, quote, unfortunate and says the subcontractor will make sure warning signs are up when workers finish for the day. A new time-lapse video shows a skyscraper being built from the ground up. The video spans the last six years and shows how one Vanderbilt rose from a patch of dirt in Midtown to a gleaming skyscraper. The video was filmed by EarthCam using eight webcams and nearly two million images. The 1,400-foot tower is the largest commercial building in Midtown. After a long stretch of heat, it looks like it's finally letting up. It has been such a nice break today. We got a break from the heat, from the thunderstorms, the humidity. So this evening is going to be really, really nice. 77 degrees by 6 p.m. Our temperatures actually falling into the 60s. And as we see those temperatures drop, the drier air will continue to move in. We do have a pretty persistent east wind setting up, though. And then through the overnight into tomorrow morning in that 10 to 15 mile per hour range, nothing crazy, but just enough that it will keep the coastal areas a few degrees cooler. Otherwise, we're in store for a cooler day overall. Temperatures dropping to near 60 degrees in the city haven't been that low in about a week. 53 in Poughkeepsie, 55 in Sussex, and Islip at 59 degrees. So another dry, cool, and less humid day ahead. Rock climbing in New York City can be tough without mountains, but New York Live shows us it's not impossible. Today we are getting an exclusive first look at the largest climbing gym in all of New York. It's called Vital here in Williamsburg. Let's go check it out. Okay, David, I've been to climbing gyms before, but I have never seen anything like this. So tell me a little bit about what you guys have going on here. Sure, so New York is a big city and we felt it deserved a big gym with a whole lot of stuff going on. So this building is actually 46,000 square feet and that makes us the largest climbing gym in the city. That includes a full fitness area, we have a full yoga studio, uh, cycling as well, 
And then one of the unique things we do is we actually have an aerial silks program. What exactly is the difference between bouldering and climbing for people who don't know? Sure, so bouldering is a style of rock climbing. Most people are familiar with rope climbing. We're going up a wall that might be 60 feet tall. Our walls are only about 15 or 16 feet above the pad, and you can actually climb them without ropes. You don't need to have any experience or knowledge about how to tie knots. You don't need to have a belay partner. You don't need to have a harness. And you don't have that same fear of heights when you get up above 20 or 30 feet and you still have to keep on climbing. So this is called a tread wall. You can think of it like a treadmill, but vertical and for climbing. So as you climb on it, the holds keep moving and you can just climb forever. I mean, if you are a legitimate climber, this is gold for practice. Totally. Tell me about some of the benefits of climbing. Climbing is phenomenal exercise. Um, there's a huge amount, obviously, of upper body, but also a huge amount of core. And then you wouldn't think it, but his legs are super engaged right now. One of the biggest features that we have is our rooftop. So we ended up designing this whole space so that we could put climbing on the roof. We also then added a large fire pit. Um, we added a sauna, outdoor showers, and we actually have a restaurant up there as well. David, thank you so much for bringing this to us. I will definitely be back. Thanks for coming out. It's great to meet you. New York City is known for its spectacular views, but this morning a select few were in for a treat, viewing what's called the Ring of Fire, an eclipse from 86 stories up. Here's News Force Tracy Strahan. If you slept in before the sunrise, boy, did you miss a big one. I saw it on the news that the eclipse was going to be on June 10th, which was my daughter's birthday. So I, I texted her. I said, you want to you want to do this? She's like, yeah, let's go. I'm like, you got to wake up at 3.30. She said, no problem, because we're coming from New Jersey. So early, early morning, but definitely worth it for this view. From the 86th floor of the Empire State Building, the view was of this, the first solar eclipse of the year a dramatic annular eclipse known as the Ring of Fire. Views of the orangey red crescent were seen from Boston, tracked by NASA, and were the reason that Caroline woke up early on her 11th birthday. I got sent a lot of articles about it, so um, um, I think I'm going to see the crescent sun, sort of, I think it's going to be. Um, and I'm really excited. It hasn't happened since 2017 but takes place when the moon passes between the sun and earth, blocking out the sun's light and casting a shadow over the planet. It's sometimes called a ring of fire because the moon appears to be smaller than the sun in the sky, and so it doesn't fully block the sun's light. And the moment that the 25 ticketed guests here saw it was very clear. So it was? Magical, absolutely stunning, and the guests loved it. Everyone loved it. How did you kind of figure out when everybody saw it at the same time? The whole crowd just gasped at the same time. It was just everybody's, wow. That was Tracy Strahan reporting. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.